All right, all right, Red Nation. Today we're gonna to be talking about lookup tables. These are especially useful for visualizing X-ray images. Would you believe that these are actually the same input image? All four of these images actually come from the same input image. And we're gonna talk about how the lookup table in your X-ray imaging actually can make these kinds of differences to the visualization in your X-ray imaging. Coming up here at How Radiology Works. First off, just something silly. When I was a kid, I used to watch these cartoons. You'd have Roadrunner going around doing some antics. Coyote would be chasing Roadrunner around. And every so often, something would happen where a trap would be set. Coyote would actually end up setting this trap, but then somehow in the end, it would actually come back to get him. Something like this might happen where he'd set a trap where a table would come down, and then you'd have to say, look up, table tables falling on you. In reality, the lookup tables started in the olden days where we would write the numbers down for actually a computation. So for instance, taking a logarithm or some sort of computation, you would actually look up in a table before calculators and computers could do this stuff even faster. On our medical imaging, you actually start with an input image. This is just a file we've talked about before, and it has what we call a matrix. In the matrix, for one image, for instance, each pixel has one value. We're gonna go through for each pixel and do the same operation. And we're gonna go into that lookup table first, then we're gonna apply a window level setting second, then we're going to actually have a conversion to the display pixel values that you're actually seeing. So we get from here where we have an input value for each pixel out to here where we have the display pixel values and we need these two mappings in order to get there. So our lookup table and then our window width and window level settings. We've got a separate video on window width and window level settings, so definitely check that one out after you check this one out. In general, why is it called the lookup table? You can think about it just like we showed you on the paper version. All you do is you take your input value, so one number that's associated with each pixel, you do it one pixel by pixel, and you take that value and you look up, and if the value that you have is in this given range, then you give an output here. If it's in this given range, you give an output here. If it's in this given range, you give an output here. The idea is that this can be done by actually just looking up what your input value is in a table, and then you get the output value. You can make all these types of image appearances and many more from just the one input. So we'll go through for one given case. This is the original values coming off of a x-ray system. If you haven't seen our videos on DR versus film, see that one, modern CR and DR systems actually have a fairly large dynamic range over which the response is what we call linear. So that results in this kind of gray flat looking image. It's nice because we're actually capturing all the values. We're not saturating out or losing any of the information right away but then it looks kind of like gray. There doesn't look to be as much contrast. So these lookup tables actually can help bring back some of that contrast and make it look more like a film acquisition. So here's an example of just one lookup table. Again, looking more like a film acquisition. You can see that the values in the lungs get darker and the values in the soft tissue get brighter. What's happening is we're having more contrast in this image in comparison with the original image. Then we can further compare that image with another lookup table, which has even more contrast. So if you look right here at these couple lesions right here, you can see they are even better visualized here after we have a different lookup table, which has even higher contrast. And then even just to blow our minds a little bit more, we could actually have a lookup table which inverts the contrast. We could make this lung, instead of making it the black pixels in the image, we could make this lung the bright pixels in the image. If you do that, now you can see the lung background values are bright here and the ribs are a little bit darker. And then you can see the tissues all down here in the abdomen are now dark. So this sometimes is called black bone imaging because the most attenuating regions are now the darker regions. Sometimes there's a preference for these types of image from the visualization standpoint as well. We're gonna go through what is happening in each of these lookup tables. So if you have an original image here, for the original image, you can 
say there was actually a lookup table that has a slope of one. So for each pixel, we're gonna go through and depending on its value, if the pixel had a value of 500, you start at your X axis and you draw up to that line and then you go over to your Y axis, you can see that in the original image for each pixel, if it starts with 500 input, you get 500 as output. So this is what we call the identity line. We can use that as reference to compare with our other lookup tables. So then this is the next one that we were just calling latitude. Some of this terminology actually comes from film. So with our latitude setting, if we have an input value that's around 500, we would take that input value of 500 and then go over to this Y axis, see where the 500 intersects our latitude curve, and we would get a value of around 100. You can definitely see why that is actually gonna be increasing the contrast because we took our 500, so this is our, one of our lower values, we took it and we suppressed it. Then in the area in the middle, it's fairly linear. Then for the higher values, we're actually going to be stretching them. So you can see in comparison with the input, we're actually suppressing the values or reducing the values down here when they're lower. And when the values are higher, we're actually increasing the values. That acts to actually increase the contrast. It's really designed for when the contrast that you're looking for is in the region in here. Then if we wanna go to this higher contrast image, we wanna increase our contrast even further. Now, if we have a value of 500 and we put it in, the output is a value of 40 or so. It's even less. Those lower input values, we're actually pushing those down more with this higher contrast setting. For higher values, we'd be pushing them up more, enhancing the contrast within the image. Then the inverted case, how do we get the image to look like this? What kind of lookup table do we want to get an image that looks like this? If we take 500 on the input, we get 1900 out. So what we're actually doing is flipping the values. So when they're low on the input, we set them to high on the output of the processed image. And then when they are high on the input, we're gonna be setting them to low on the output. This is how you invert from dark to light and from light to dark in your x-ray images using this type of inverted lookup table. This is the processing that happens within a lookup table to actually display the image you additionally need to set your window width and window level, and that actually controls the range of values from a minimum value to a maximum value that are going to be shown. And the middle value is the window level, and then the total range that you're gonna show is the window width. For more details to really understand window width and window level, definitely check out our video on window width and window level coming up next.